Hi friends, today we start lecture 84 in our helicopter dynamics course. And today I'm going to focus on the aerodynamic modeling as far as airfoils are concerned. And remember that at the blade section level, the wing section or the rotor blade essentially becomes an airfoil. And we can use some of the theory derived for these sections in the past in this situation. So the details of the airfoil pressure distribution are important for people who actually look at the airfoil design problem. So there are actually blade sections or airfoils which can be obtained which are more suitable for the helicopter flight conditions. And again, various CFD softwares are used in these problems. And there you need to look at the airfoil pressure distribution and so on, the CL by CD or whatever metric you are trying to optimize, maybe CL3 by 2 by CD, etc. Now, when you are looking at helicopter performance, the pressure distribution does not matter so much because you are actually looking at the mean values of various loads and you do not need to calculate the pressure distribution to a great deal of detail. You are sufficiently happy if you get the loads which are acting on the sections. So the airfoil characteristics are modeled in terms of lift, pitching moment, and drag coefficients. And these are typically functions of alpha, which we have seen in some previous lectures. Now, these models are typically incorporated into the blade element theory, or the BET. And essentially, the blade section is then considered to be an airfoil section. For the airfoil, we calculate the lift, drag, and the pitching moment, and then we incorporate these into our loads. So the simplest model you can get for CL, CM, and CD are actually these polynomial models. So these are valid when alpha is small, when you are below the stall region. So for example, if you take a look at CL, you can clearly see this is a linear model. Essentially, the lift curve slope is given by C1. So CM is, is also a linear model here, and CD is somewhat of a nonlinear model because you are letting this D2 term also be there. Now, this kind of model is valid at subsonic Mach numbers. You can calculate the air loads to a reasonable level by using these type of equations. And these are very frequently used in textbooks and so on, or in closed form solutions in various situations. Now, how do we get all these coefficients C0, C1, F0, F1, D0, D1, D2, and so on? These are all actually obtained empirically from experimental data. So a long time ago, people have calculated or rather performed experiments with different airfoil sections, and then they have obtained all these coefficients. So for example, there is the book theory of wing section by Ebert and von Donoff in that a lot of experimental results are given for different well-known sections such as Naka 0012 and so on. And these numbers are known for all these particular sections. So these polynomials represent the airfoil quite well below the stall regime. So of course, as you would understand from the typical curves of CL, CM, and CD with respect to alpha, that those relations are totally invalid when there is large flow separation or you are in the stalled regime. So whenever alpha becomes high, your air loads become nonlinear functions of alpha. And therefore, you need to actually use the realistic model rather than these simple equations which we discussed before. Now, in such cases also, there are some table lookup schemes which can be used to calculate the CL, CD, and CM. So what's a table lookup? A table lookup is essentially a table. So in this table, you have, for example, mark number in one column. You have alpha in one column, say 0, 1, 2, 18 to 20 degrees. And then you have CL, CM, and CD. So these tabulated values are typically obtained from experiments performed on airfoil sections or wing sections. And the advantage of this table is that now you do not need simple formulas which are essentially constrained to linearity or something like that. Here you can 
see your blade section you can see the particular alpha and m value corresponding to the blade section and then you can go into the table and pick out the value of cl cm and cd which you should be using so the measured airfoil data is stored in tables and the cl value or cd value or cm value can be calculated from these tables so now if the value of a alpha or m falls somewhere between the values which are given there then you use interpolation now that is a subject which is covered in detail in many courses in numerical computation so now you know one of the reasons why such courses are used again interpolation is a very useful theory which can be used here and therefore you can find the value of cl at whatever given alpha or m value for any given plate section so to show it figuratively you have a blade here you have a section somewhere here corresponding to this section there is a value of alpha there is a value of m remember alpha can be obtained by theta minus phi m is known here because we know the speed here we know the velocity we know the rotation speed we know the speed of sound we can calculate the Mach number and therefore i can get cl cm and cd at this particular section and this method is used by a large number of computer programs which have been developed for rotor dynamics rotor load calculation rotor performance and also for flight simulation software because it's a reasonably good method and the fact that you are using table lookup shows that you are capturing some uh, real some aspects of reality in this problem so again you are not taking very simple models of cl cm and cd but you are taking models which are closer to experimental data or rather you are using experimental data itself so in some situation people actually like to use curve fit so if they want they can develop curve fits with respect to the data provided in the table so they can use certain nonlinear functions here such as the one shown here they can extend it to include mark number also so again that's a particular choice if people are comfortable using tables and interpolation or they prefer to actually fit polynomial curves or some different curves into this particular function and then use those curves now one of the things you should always try to do is you should fit as low polynomial as possible through data so this is generally the principle of scientific parsimony that uh, whenever there is some data you can fit as low degree of polynomial as possible so typically n is 3 is a sufficiently good approximation for most nonlinear functions and therefore if you have some nonlinear function in terms of cl or cd or cm you could fit a cubic through it and then you could use this in your model so that's one of the ways to capture the airfoil characteristic using polynomial functions so some people prefer this approach some people prefer the approach of table lookup depends on the situation table lookup would of course entail that you have some computer programs where you have ways to call these tables back and forth whereas polynomials can be very simply put in as part of your computer program itself they can be coded in and so you could have a function where cl is called and then you get cl given the value of alpha or in case m if you want to include m also so this was a brief take on some of the airfoil properties and how you can use simple mathematical models as well as table lookup to capture these properties and these are often used in a variety of helicopter performance dynamics and flight simulation softwares so i hope this video is useful to you i will see you in my next video see you then